This is easier to use than a server rack battery, and that's mostly because there is no communication built into it. So if you're brand new to off-grid solar or backup solar, anything like that, then this is gonna be a really good option because not only is it more affordable than say server rack batteries that you typically find, but this has the same capacity and it's really, really easy to put together. My name's Ben, this is the Minuteman Solar YouTube channel. I really appreciate you being here and I'm gonna show you exactly how to build your own DIY system with over 15 kilowatt hours of battery capacity. Now 15 kilowatt hours is about half of what most people use in an average day as an average American in average America. Every single house is different. It has nothing to do with the square footage. It really has to do with the appliances in your house. So I wanna show you exactly how to put three of these batteries together so that way you can have a large capacity. And I'm gonna be tying that in with my 6000 XP off-grid inverter. In my opinion, this is about as basic and as simple as it gets. So whether you want to use this for backup power in your house or have power on the go in your RV, or you've got an off-grid cabin, you just need to let it sit there and do its thing, this is a really good option to go with. Now, each one of these batteries weighs 84 pounds, which is actually less than most server rack batteries. So that's one bonus that it has, is it's a little bit easier to move around. Also, because of the shape, and these handles built into it, it's easier to move around. I've actually been using these at my house for a number of months now, and a few months ago, I actually dropped one of these off of this U-Line cart. Zero issues at all, no cracks, no dents, no issues. Batteries are still working perfectly fine. So that drop was from almost four feet tall and it fell straight on its back on the weakest side, zero issue. So these cases are really strong. They're definitely gonna take a beating even in an RV. If you're gonna use them in something like an RV, just keep the padding that comes with these and put that underneath it. You'll have more than enough padding to keep these very comfortable as they bounce around in your RV. Now these are 51.2 volt batteries. It's the same thing as a 48 volt battery. I'm gonna be pairing this with my 48 volt 6000 XP off-grid inverter that I bought. And then I'm gonna show you how I plug this in and run my entire house. Each one of these batteries is gonna last 6,000 cycles before it reaches 80% of its capacity. All that means is you can use this hard for 20 years nonstop before you'll be able to notice some form of degradation in the cells. Now, before you put batteries together, the first thing you wanna do is make sure that they're about the same voltage. So I'm gonna take my voltmeter and just put it to the DC volt setting. And I'm just gonna test the positive and negative of each of these to make sure that they're within 0.5 volts of each other. This one's 53.3, 53.4, and 53.4. So this is totally good to go as is. All I'm gonna be doing is going from positive to positive to positive, and then negative to negative to negative. So we wanna do a parallel connection, which just means you're keeping the volts the same, but the amps are going up. Now I went ahead and 3D printed these caps. This is just an extra safety measure. And that's just to make sure that I have less of a chance of touching a positive cable to a negative post, because that could create a spark. We don't want any sparks. Now this is a one foot long, two aught gauge battery cable. That means it's two slash zero. That just means it's super thick. This is capable of handling 175 amps. This is way overkill for a battery of this size. I just like to standardize on a cable of this size. And I'll leave a link in the description down below of where I buy these. Now, normally you'd want to use a 13 millimeter socket. I have a half inch, which is close, but a half inch socket may stick to these bolts a little bit. I'm going to make this my main positive down here. I have this cable that I've made on my own that has this quick disconnect on it. You don't need to use this. I'm gonna show you the other cable that's easier to use than this. I only use this because I use this battery pack with different things, and so I use a quick disconnect. This is called an Amphenol connector. I'm gonna go ahead and start with this, and I'm just going to get this set. It's also best if you wear eye protection because if you do get a big spark, you can cause this metal to get molten extremely fast and fly everywhere. If there's an imbalance in the voltage between your batteries, you'll get a spark once you make some connections. That's very normal, shouldn't hurt you at all. I'm using this on the lowest setting and I'm just doing a couple of ugga duggas. Just like that, that's a technical term. Positives are done, moving on to the negatives. I'm gonna make this my main negative here on the left. Just like that, I'm connected all up in parallel, positive, positive, negative, negative, and I've got my main positive and my main negative right here. Now, because I'm using this U-Line cart, I actually want these batteries on the bottom. That way, all of this weight for this whole cart is on the bottom rather than being on the top. I want a lower center of gravity. I'm gonna go ahead and move everything down here and re-bolt it together. That's how easy it is, is I can just do this without worrying about having to rewire it because it goes so fast. 
All right, this whole thing's already good to go. It's gonna slide it in here. Now, normally I just use a big battery cable like this. It has its own battery terminals on the end. These are 3 8 inch terminal ends, and this is a 2 aught cable. This is gonna be the easiest way of putting this all together. It's gonna feed the positive cable under here. I'm gonna go to the positive battery post, which is on the left side here inside the inverter. And then this would go into the first positive battery post because we wanna make sure that we're drawing our positive from one far end of the battery bank and our negative from the other far end. That allows the batteries to work evenly so that way they keep the same state of charge as well as have the same amount of cycles on them. I've not been able to find them with Amphenol connectors on one end and these on the other. I custom made this, which is another reason why I recommend the other cable. You don't have to have all this quick disconnect stuff. These Amphenol connectors have all the contacts enclosed, so there's no way for these to touch and make a spark. Make sure that your battery breaker is turned off and that the power switch is turned off on the right side of the inverter. We're gonna go ahead and get this on here. Just like that, that's done. As a side note to how I'm able to run my whole house off of this, I bought this split phase box right here. This has up to 30 amps of output power, but this only has up to 25 amps of output power. But I've got leg one and leg two. So I can get single phase and split phase power. You need split phase if you wanna run power for the whole house. This was about 40 bucks on Amazon. I just bought it. And then the white cable goes into the back neutral bus bar. The green cable goes into the right ground bus bar. Then I have my black as leg one and my red as leg two. All I did was cut off the plug that was on the end of it and wired it directly into the inverter. Simply go negative to negative here and positive to positive there. These two cables I have wired in for my solar. This has two solar inputs. I just put the red in the first one, the black into the second one. You have solar one and solar two. Now I'm gonna go ahead and turn on battery breaker and then turn on the inverter on the side. Just like that, we can see the battery is at 53.2 volts and that it's 100% full. The system is happy. We leave this as a lead acid setup because we're not doing any communication with the batteries. That's one of the reasons why I like the battery so much. It's just simple. Don't need to worry about changing it. Now, in order to get power to these outlets, I'm going to flip on this breaker here. And we see those red lights are now turned on meaning there's power in here. The way to get power to your house is super easy. All you do is have an electrician install an interlock switch. What that is, it's a little metal switch in your electrical panel that allows you to turn off all grid power and turn on all off-grid power. I recommend getting an SS250P connection. This is a very common generator connection and it's rated to 50 amps or basically 12 kilowatts. So even though my inverter can only run six kilowatts, at least I'm already upgraded for in the future when I get a bigger inverter or if I have a bigger solar generator. All I do is get this SS250R to L1430P connection, plug that in here. Then I plug in my L1430 extension cable. I just bought all this on Amazon and then plug it in here into my split phase outlets. Inside my main electrical panel, this little metal thing is the interlock switch. So I'm gonna turn off grid power. So there's no power in the whole house at all. Pull this up flip this breaker over, and now my inverter is running my entire house with those greener power batteries. So you can see it's using about 1.5 kilowatts, or about 1500 watts to run power to my whole house and run everything that I already had turned on. So if I wanna run my mini split air conditioners, I can. If I wanna take a shower, run the well pump, I can. If I want to run my 3D printer, I can. Watch a movie, not a problem. The biggest benefit is that every outlet has power, every light switch works, and my fridge, freezers, everything keeps running just like normal. These fans are blowing pretty hard, but that's because it's running the entire house. The biggest thing to keep in mind is that you may need a larger inverter in order to run your house, because in my house, I mostly use propane for anything heat related. So that's for hot water, for drying my clothes, for cooking, anything heat is gonna be propane, which means my loads are gonna be pretty low. So for me, I use about 30 kilowatt hours a day. If you have an electric water heater or an electric dryer or an electric range, you're gonna be using a lot more energy and you're gonna need a much bigger inverter. That's where I'd recommend going up to the 12 12,000 XP instead of the 6,000 XP. I'll have links and discounts and everything down below. You can find everything there at the same price. Everybody's getting it, plus whatever my coupon codes allow you to get. If I were to redo this, I would definitely get a fourth battery in order to have 20 kilowatt hours because the batteries are really affordable at only about $1,000 a piece. 
So the batteries and the inverter, everything's under five grand. This is a really easy system that anybody could build. With how easy all of this is to do, there's really not a huge necessity to get a complete solar generator anymore, unless you just don't want to deal with all this wiring. There's a little bit of programming to do with the screen, but really not anything. So if you just want to pull it out of the box, turn it on and it works, then go to my website, poweredaffordablesolar.com or soon to be minutemansolar.com, and you'll find all of the solar generators that are pre-built, ready to go out of the box. But if you want to save a bunch of money, use these greener power batteries or any other affordable lithium iron phosphate battery, pair it with an off-grid inverter, and you can seriously run everything very easily. Now, if you found this video helpful, I'm pretty certain you're gonna find this video helpful as well. And if you've used similar batteries or these batteries yourself, please comment down below so that other people can have some feedback on how well they've worked for you.